Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and have we got an edition for you today. Uh, we're going to be looking at star battle puzzles with Kurt Hugo Schneider um, who is obviously uh, one of the world's biggest YouTube stars but happens to be an extremely bright puzzler as well. Um, we've done a few puzzles that Kurt has uh, compiled on in our videos before but today we're actually going to show you a video that uh, Kurt has sent us um, on a tip he's got for solving star battle quickly so if you're into speed solving I think this will be very very interesting for you um, now before we start I'm just going to remind you of the rules of star battle we've got a lot of new subscribers some of you may not know the rules and I'm also going to tell you that at the end of Kurt's video which is about uh, eight or nine minutes of this video um, we're going to get on to today's puzzle which is going to be me attempting to solve a special star battle that I have sourced from my friends in Japan. Uh, it's this one here, <laughs> which is a, an enormous three-star star battle uh, created by Maho Yagota, who's I think widely regarded as the great setter of star battles in, in the world. Um, so this comes very highly recommended, but I think it's gonna prove a challenge. As always, you're gonna be able to play the puzzle. You just click on the link under the video. But let's just remind you of the rules of star battle. It has a very simple rule set um, and for that reason, I think this this is one of the most underrated puzzles in the world today. I don't understand why every newspaper doesn't carry a star battle puzzle because they are uh, they're beautiful. They are beautiful, and um, yeah, they've got some great logic. So very simply, what we need to do in any star battle grid is we need to put uh, in this for this size of grid we need to put two stars in every row, every column, and every region. And the only other rule is that the stars must not touch each other. So if, for example, we decided that this this square here was a star, then we couldn't have a star in that square because these would touch at the corner and that's not allowed. And apart from that, that is all there is to star battle. Now, the next voice you hear is going to be Kurt as he talks you through uniqueness in the context of these puzzles. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Kurt. I was going to write an email, but I figured it'd just be faster to make a video and it'd be more clear what I'm talking about. I want to know if you guys have ever used this star battle solving technique or if you've ever even like seen this technique used before because I can't, I haven't found anyone talk about this in a solve on a video. And yeah, anyway, I'll just show, show you what it is. So uh, there's a couple puzzles that I picked from this site, which you're probably familiar with. It's got like a bunch of puzzles on here. And I'm just looking at the 10 by 10 to hard star battle puzzles. Now, the solve times on here are blazingly fast. Like when I first saw that people were solving these puzzles in sub one minute times, I couldn't believe that it was really possible. But you can only submit a time if it's a random puzzle out of their like millions. But um, it has to be a random puzzle that you solve. So the times are legit. And after spending uh, the other couple days trying to get fast at these, I, I not, not to pat myself on the back, but I got the fourth fastest time on the site now. And I think I really understand how to solve these things quickly. And I can't believe that there's a technique that's so useful I haven't heard people talk about. I wanna see if you've seen this. So I'm just gonna to get to the interesting position quickly. So you get to this position here. And now um, when I was solving this, um, the position at the top, I instantly recognized. So that's where I went. Now I, I will say there, you could have made progress without using this technique. There's, now that I look at the puzzle, if you look at the bottom, um, you only have two stars in the bottom four rows and there's only, you know, six more two by two boxes over here. So all these two by twos have to contain stars. Then you could maybe see that this region needs one more star and it has to be in this two by two box. So you can't have stars here. Anyway, you could make progress, but looking at these top couple rows, you can already make progress just from this position looking at this. And I apologize if this is obvious to you, but to me, when I first realized this trick, it was... It was a moment of discovery. So anyway, I hope it's the same for you. If not, um, let me just say this can't be a star. And the reason is really obvious once, once you see it. If this is a star, then the puzzle can't have a unique solution. You need to put a star over here and you need to put a star over here and you could always swap them. And I've never seen someone talk about using uniqueness to, to solve a star battle but it's so useful. In fact, I would say it's more useful using uniqueness to solve star battles than it is to solve Sudoku's. Star battles, they're, 
you can kind of like think of it as like a Sudoku where you only have zeros and ones. And each region has two ones. And then you also have this sort of king's move restriction. But because of that, you're going to have so many more situations where you got this like this pair, right? We got a pair over here, a zero one pair. Now, if you put a star here, you're creating that same pair here. And obviously, you can see that you, you can always swap this. So this is clearly not a valid position. And then in the solve, once you say that this is not one, obviously this has to be one, and this is not one, this has to be one over here, not here. Now you've already put two stars in here, not here, not here, and now not here because that has a problem with this region. The solve is actually really, really easy now. Bam, I'm just gonna finish it up here just so it's nice and satisfying. All right, can't have one here, one here, one here, and not one there, and now we have this. All right, cool. Sorry about all done. Anyway, I think if you didn't recognize the uniqueness, you couldn't have solved this particular star battle this quickly. And um, for how common these uniqueness situations are in star battle, I think it's just, this is an absolutely essential technique to know, to solve these puzzles quickly. And it really comes up in just so many little variations. Okay, here's another one, which um, even though this was in the heart, I think this is actually somewhat of an easier puzzle as well as the last one, but you know, whatever. Let's just take a look, uh, not here, and then here you have two, uh, two regions, two rows, so None of these, you're gonna, that's gonna force stars into there. All right, and then that forces like that. Okay, and now, um, let me just mark that off there. Okay, and now if I looked at this for a little longer, I probably would have noticed one star. That means that you have to have exactly one star in here, and that means that you can't have any of these B stars, but okay, whatever, I didn't. I just saw this position right here because it's so familiar now to me. Just look at these two columns. Okay, you have to put a star down here, otherwise there's just not enough space to put stars in these two columns. But if you put a star down here, could you ever put a star into these positions? Like, I mean, maybe I'll just let that sit for a moment. Could there ever be a star here? And once you appreciate the uniqueness proposition, and again, I, I apologize if this is obvious to you guys, but to me, this was kind of a moment of discovery, just recognizing this pattern. You can never have a star here. because if you put a star in one of these positions, you could always swap it with a star from here, and the puzzle can never have a unique solution. And now once you have that, you can't have stars here. So this has to be a star. I mean, isn't that crazy? Just like looking at this bottom position, you could already place a star here. Okay, let me just interject there and explain exactly what Kurt's saying. I mean, he's absolutely right, and it's brilliantly fast how, spots, how he spots it. But some of you may not be appreciating exactly what the logic is that he's using. Now, what he's doing is he's looking at this shape in the bottom left-hand side, and instinctively he, he recognizes that there must always be uh, at least one star in those red squares there. So the question he's asking us is whether there can be a star in either of those blue squares. And again, this it, it, it's very cunning, this, um, because Kurt knows that if there is a star in the blue squares here, what, he's, what he then will know is that there is a star up there, actually in exactly these two positions. Now, why is this an enormous problem with the puzzle? Well, the reason it's a problem is let's imagine that this was this one here is the star. Let's just focus on this this square here for the time being. Now, what is the difference between this solution, where there was a star here and a star here, and this solution, where there's a star here and a star here? And the answer is nothing. There is no difference between those two situations. Uh, if if you can put a star here and a star here, you can also definitely put a star here and a star here. And therefore, these two puzzles are analogous to one another. They are not unique. Um, and it's a beautiful, uh, it's beautiful how quick he spots this. I think the way his mind works is he looks at these um, these little two by ones as almost dominoes. So, uh, you know, if I use yellow to show you what I mean, I think he's always looking for this sort of pattern. 
and he's he's a, therefore able to carve up the grid into a sequences of these patterns and spot these opportunities to use this uniqueness point. But anyway, just in case some of you didn't follow it the way Kurt explained it, I thought I'd uh, I'd chip in there. And now look, you have a pair here, and this is a pair. Well, you can never have a star here. So you have a star here, it forces a star here, and you can always swap them. So you have to have a star here. And anyway, this to me was pretty cool. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I'll just finish this puzzle just so it's satisfying. Um, now at this point, okay, so you need one star here to complete these two columns. And now at this point, I was looking at this pair here and this pair here have another sort of uniqueness element going on because they need to be opposites of each other. So that means there needs to either be a star here or a star here. And I think at this point, I finally noticed these two columns because I, either which way, if you put a star there or a star there, you're always gonna have a star here, no matter what. And again, I mean, you, if you saw that you could just sum up how you can put stars in these two columns, you could have already placed that star there, but whatever, I didn't notice it. Okay, now you can't have a star here, and that's, yeah, that's gonna mean that you can't have stars there like that, now you can't have that. So this is a star. Now that places the star there and there. I can't have a star there. There's a star here, not there. And now stars are like that. Okay, can't have a star there, 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 there. There, 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 there. Mm -hmm. It kind of just solves itself now, doesn't it? Not there, there, there. And now what am I missing? Oh yeah, okay, there. All right, and star battle solved. So, uh, yeah, okay, so this has to be a star in there, and now um, this feels like, yeah, you can't have one here, so here, not here, not here, not here, not here, um, you can't have this, so here, and now. <laughs> like, uniqueness, again, it's just crazy how common this is. You have to have both of these be stars, otherwise you could always swap it with this one. So that means that there had to be a star here because if there weren't a star here, you could still swap it. So that can't be a star. So this. Right, this is my second interjection and last one on Kurt's, um, on Kurt's video because he spots something here which is very beautiful and almost elides over a second consequence of it, which is very powerful um, and quite startling. So firstly, Kurt can obviously see very quickly that you can't have two greens here because that would create three stars in the first row. So he knows that there's at least one green up here. And the question is, let's imagine it's here for the sake of argument. The question is, what's happening in the second domino? Is the domino going to be here or is it going to be here? And Kurt knows because of the uniqueness point, it must be here. So let's just explore the alternative and check why that's the case. So. If there was a star here, we know for sure there would be a star here and then we would have grey cells here and here and, and the puzzle would continue. But when we looked at the finished solution, the issue with this arrangement is there is no distinction between the green one here and the green one here and the alternative, which is the green here and the green here. There is no difference between those, those solutions. Now, one of the interesting things that you might have noticed about, about this is the importance of these two squares here. What's going on with these two squares? So Kurt knows as well that by, by, because of his uniqueness argument, we have to have this arrangement. This has to be correct, what's in the grid here. But if there is no star in either of these positions, so if this is genuinely the position we got to at the end of the puzzle, this puzzle is still absolutely broken. Now, why is that? Well, it's because there's nothing about the puzzle. There's nothing about the puzzle's internal logic that tells us which way round this green and this green go. We can swap them round. There's nothing to stop us changing the order here and having the uh, which way round would it be then? Uh, that one, that way. And having them this way round. Nothing stops us doing that. We've still got two stars in row one, two stars in row two. We've got the same number of stars as we did have in column whatever that is, five and column ten. We've got the same number of stars in this shape and this shape. 
The puzzle hasn't changed its structure at all. The internal logic has not changed at all. And this, I think, is a really, really powerful point because not only is able to deduce immediately that this square is green, which is correct, and therefore this square is green, which is also correct, but also that there is for absolute certain a green in one of these two squares. In order to allow the puzzle to have a unique solution, there must be. And that is really, really beautiful as well. Great spot from Kurt. Okay. Uh, there, there. Um, now you have to have this one and this one. And okay, what else? Let's look here. Oh yeah, you need to have these two. So now down there, so you need one, one. So this is one. And now look, you ah, uh, look at this. This is crazy. Look, the, here's a pair. Here's a pair. Now this has to be a star down here. So these two, they can't both be in the bottom, but they also can't be opposite each other because then you could swap them. So they have to be in the same row in the second column because of uniqueness. It's crazy. It's crazy how common this is. How is, how has no one talked about this? Okay, so now let's just finish off this puzzle well. Um, you have to have one here. And now, uh, yeah, yeah, this, this can't be one because it sees too much of this shape. So then you need one here and then not there, then not there, then here, then not here, then not here, then there. Ha, huh. wow. Anyway, I, <laughs> I couldn't have scripted that better. I mean, there were, there were a couple moments where uniqueness kind of played a role, but like these pairs, they just occur so, so often in these types of puzzles. Anyway, uh, again, I apologize if you guys have seen this a bunch, but this was a discovery to me to just realize like all the, uh, obviously I was aware, you know, these puzzles have to have unique solutions, but just all the implications of knowing that and how you can really use it to speed up your times and get just blazingly fast solves on these puzzles. So anyway, appreciate your stuff and uh, enjoy solving the puzzles every day. So yeah, rock on guys. Okay, so we've seen Kurt solving at huge speed. Now we're going to take it rather more sedately. I'm going to have a go at this puzzle for you. Um, now, I'm, I'm indebted to Ryotaro Chiba for sending me this puzzle. I asked him to send me the best star battle um, that he's ever, ever solved. And he said it's a choice between this one, which is an incredible... This is a seven-star star battle. But he said it took him... Um, uh, 26 hours to solve it um, so I didn't think we could make that one into a video you can see actually both of these star battles this one and the one we're going to try today they're themed apparently on something called Cinderella girls which some of you who are more familiar with Japanese culture may may know about but um, I have to say I don't and that's why there's sort of Mio spelt out in the grid here this one is not seven stars it's three stars um, as usual if you want to play click on the link under the video and with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, the first thing to do with Star Battle is to try and find uh, small restricted regions. Right, so this one, this one is restricted. Look, that, yes, we can divide this. So my best tip for Star Battle, I suppose, or the first tip is that any two by two region can contain a maximum of one star. So what I like to do especially in harder puzzles, is I like to highlight uh, if I can restrict um, a box, for example, like this one. So I know that the three stars in this box, there must be one star in each colored region, which is sort of nice. Um, and what that's going to allow me to do, look, we can switch to star battle notation. That one can't be a star anymore, because if we had a star here, it would eliminate all the possibilities from the blue cells. So we get to this point and uh, now what do we do now <laughs> uh, so I think the next thing I'm going to look for is big regions perversely I'm now not looking at small regions anymore because none of these regions seem to be restricted enough I'm now going to look for big regions and when I say a big region I'm looking for something that spans a lot of a row or a column um, so for example this one at the bottom you know that a lot of this shape takes up the bottom row of the grid but unfortunately it's such a weird shape that I don't think I can use the geometry of the 
puzzle to help me very much. O's here. Got an elephant shape here. That's what this one looks like. Looks like it's got an elephant's trunk. Uh, this square's restricted look here. This square can't be a star because if I put a star in here, how do I fill this shape now? Well, the only way is going to be by putting three stars into this vertical section, and that's going to give me four stars in the column. Now, four stars in the column is not what we're after, so that square can't be a star. So now, now what I'm trying to do in my mind is I'm trying to divide the grid into different rows. So for example, if I look down this column here and I imagine an imaginary line dividing the grid, whoops, uh, just following the cursor here, we know that to the right hand side of that line there are four complete columns. Now four complete columns need to have 12 stars in them and we've got this one here sort of creature with a long nose so that's three stars we've got this shape that's another three stars we've got the center of the O that's another three stars and then we've got three more stars that we need but that's going to be this L shape region here and the sort of right hand side of the gray O and that's unfortunately I don't think that is useful um, so, right, let's try a different approach. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Let's try the bottom of the grid instead. So let's try an imaginary line sort of dividing where the cursor is moving at the moment. So that line so that line's got five complete rows below it. So it needs 15 stars below this imaginary line. Now, is it possible to get 15 stars below that line? We've got three from this huge shape. We could have three from this shape, that's six. I can only have one from this shape, seven. One from the bottom of the eye, eight, nine, 10. So I need five, five at least from the two O's. There's only six in the O's themselves. So if we can, oh yeah, if we can just do some maths. Um, look, if we, uh, let me just try and draw an edge. If I draw the imaginary line in along here. Okay, so if, I try and put six stars below the green line in these two O's. Then above the green line, the O's have zero stars in them. But I know that these two rows here have to have six stars. But I've removed one, two, three, four, five, five by two. I've removed 10 of the possible squares from these two rows. And I've, as this is a 15 by 15 grid, I've only left myself a 10 by 2 region to put six stars into it. Well, we said at the start, you need a 2 by 2 region can contain a maximum of one star. So if I have a 10 by 2 region, that's a maximum of five stars. That's not enough. So there must be one star here. And therefore, there must be exactly five stars below the green line in the O's. And that means... That means that this shape here, this weird sort of duck shape, has all of its stars below the green line. So now we can do some, now we can actually do something useful, I think. Maybe get something in the grid. So what do I need to do? I need to X out though. These can't be stars because I need to make sure all the stars are in, in the bottom of the duck. Um, in fact, I need to colour more as well, because th there must be a star in that shape. There must be a star at the bottom of the eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There must be five stars. 
over here. So we can also, there must be exactly one star in this huge green region. And at one, two, there must be four stars over this way. So again, we're going to be able to, there must, given that we know this must divide into two by two regions, we can just do this. And I'll fill in this one with, I don't know, yellow. There we go. We're making a very colorful pattern. Now, th this is a nice pattern here because it's a domino. Whenever we get a domino pattern, we know that we can we can't have a star in that square or that square because that would remove the possibility of a star being in either of the domino shapes. So we actually get to place X's there and that gives us another domino, which places X's here, which gives us another domino. And very often with star battle, this is how it works. They sort of chain. Now, actually looking at this, we have a green domino. So this square can't be a star. Therefore, we get our first star in the grid. And neither of these can be stars, so we get another domino, and we can do that. Uh, and then we can get stuck. <laughs> oh no, not stuck, not stuck. This region, look, we've got one star here, one star in the 2x2 two two blue region. We need a third star, it has to go there. Now, what's that done for us? Well, it's meant that can't be a star look because in the eye shape here, we've got one star, two star using the domino. There has to be one star at the top of the eye. So if this was a star, it would rule all three squares out. Um, two, three. Okay. What next? The duck shape region is a bit restricted, isn't it? We've got to put three stars in this duck shape region. Ah, yeah, okay. So let's look at this region here. If all of this region's stars were in a column, whatever it is, four, then we would X those cells in the duck region. And now I've not got enough room to put three stars in the duck region, so that's not right. That means that I mustn't put three stars in this region in column four. Therefore, that is a star. Therefore, that is a star. -hoo -hoo -hoo. Now we're cooking with gas. So that's a star. And we get, oh, we're going to get another star here. Now we get a domino. That means we can X off here. And just to keep good order, we know that there must be, in this region now, there must be a star in one of those squares. So I'm actually going to mark that uh, with a different color. There's definitely one star in that region. And we know there's definitely one star in the duck region because we've already worked that out. So there, there are our three stars in column four. So switching back to Xing, we can X that square. We can X this square. We can X this square and this square because otherwise we're going to rule out everything from the red region. So, yeah, we can carry on with this, can't we? Because I can, there must be a one in this domino, one, two, and there must be one in this sort of L shape, backward L shape there. So I must make that green. Um, so. So we've got a domino here. Again, we can X out these two squares. X out this square. Um, we might, what can we do now? Uh, I'm not sure. I feel like we should be able to make more progress now because this is so cluttered. Uh, 
Um, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, yeah, yeah, I've got something. Right, okay. So let's, now we're going to do a grid division again. Let's imagine this time we're going to come down this column, column five, or between column five and column six, where the cursor's moving. So we know to the left hand side, oops, to the left hand side of this line, we need 15 stars. Now the M is going to give us three. This funny shape region is going to give us three more, so that's six. This region gives us three more, that's nine. Now, we get a tenth one from this blue domino. Now, look at this region here. This blue domino, this red one by three, and the green domino. Can we have three stars in this region? I don't think we can. Because if I try and put three stars in, I'd have to have one there, one there, and now the red region has no possible domino. So that is not allowed. So these three connected colors here can give us or con can contribute a maximum of two dominoes to columns one to five. So that means we still need three more dominoes to get to 15. And where can we get them from? Well, only one shape can contribute. It's this one, this, this massive one at the bottom. That I can't really describe, but it's this one. So we know that all three of this one's um, stars are to the left of my imaginary line. In fact, that one's a domino, so they can't be there anyway. So that, And they can't be anywhere over here, because I need all three of them in columns one to five. And now, yeah, now this is really restricted because what's left of this now sort of region that looks a bit like a six is very little. I've got to get three stars into this. So this square can't be a star because that was going to force this. And now I've got to get three stars into a two by three region. So that doesn't work. That's an X. This is a star. That rules out two for my red region which gives me a star here and that's going to give me yet another star and that gives me three stars up here as well. Yeah, let's let's continue to X. So I'm just I was just checking whether I could do anything else there. I couldn't I can't see what I can do there. So um now Ah, but this this has had a this has made my six region even smaller. I've got to get still got to get three stars in here. One. Oh, this is brilliant. So there's going to be one at the very bottom here in the two by two, and then the only other way I can get two stars in is like that. So this is four. So that gives me a third star in column one. Look, wow. I mean, this is why this is why we seek out these puzzles because they are just so so satisfying now so now I've got three here there's got to be two up here ah no hang on I'm not thinking about this clearly so column two and column three need six stars I've only got two so these yes this is a seven by two region into which I need to put four stars. So that means that there's going to have to be a series of dominoes. Um, they are going, uh, let's use red. So it's going to have to look like this. That's the only way I can squeeze four stars into this region. So, and then I can do a lot of Xing, which is satisfying. So let's do that. X's all the way along there. So I've got one here. Sort of feel like I should be able to. Two in this region. And I have two in this region. <laughs> There 
could be one or two in this region. Oh, of course, look, the top of the eye is now restricted. I'm not sure how long that's been restricted for. Oh, it's restricted by the three when we got three stars here. So now I can divide this region as well. So I will. That's got to be a um, star in one of those, star in one of those, and you're already all have spotted that this square therefore is a star. That's given us three stars in this column now, so that's a star. That's interesting for many reasons. So now we've got two stars in this column. There must be one star in this region at the top. So let's mark that in uh, yellow maybe, one, two, three. Go back to star battle notation. We obviously now can't have a star in either of those squares or we'd eliminate all the possibilities from the yellow region. That can't be a star because it's next to a two by one domino. One, two, can be a maximum. One, two. So there's a maximum of one more star in the M shape in this sort of middle limb of the M. Uh, this can't be a star because it, it would rule out everything from the red square. That can't be a star because it's next to a star. Therefore, that's a star. Therefore, this is a star. Oh, and in this column, I've still got two more stars to put in, and there's only two more, two free spaces, so that must look like this. Okay. Okay, sorry about this. A bit of a pause while I try and understand how the puzzle's meant to develop from here. I can see in this column there must either be a star here or a star here. Oh, and that has an interesting implication for our elephant shape. Because if I put a star in the elephant's trunk right at the end here, that's going to force a star up there because I need a third star in this column. But in doing that, that now completes my elephant shape. I've now got three stars in the elephant shape. Now, why does that matter? Well, it rules out an immense amount of this column from having a star in it. There couldn't be a star along the elephant's trunk at all. There couldn't be a star here. So I'd now have to put three stars in this column in these three cells. That's not possible. So we get another deduction. That square is not, um, that's not a star. And in fact, I'm not, I don't think this can be a star either because it's a similar point. I, the, the effect of putting a star in here is that I get a star there. And you can see that this star has a, well, it has a knock-on effect down, down this column. It forces stars into the dominoes there and rules out a star from this position. And now I've removed the latitude I needed to get three stars in this column. I can put one here. I can put one in the elephant's trunk, not two, because there's already two stars in the elephant. And I can't put one here because it's next to a star. So we actually get another deduction there. This square is not a star. And therefore, oh, this column now has got two stars. It needs a third. It must be here. And now we've got three stars in row one, because we've got one, two, and one in the domino. That means that can't be a star. That Oh, this is brilliant now. Let's just finish off the top of this row though none of those can be stars but look down here if I put a star here the blue one by three region has no possibility so it must be here therefore I've got three stars now in this row so there's no stars along there I've got these, these two stars and this domino I mean there's no stars along here maybe I'm going to be able to solve this with without too much drama. Now, in the, in ro row two, I've got one star. I need two more stars. So they must be in those dominoes. OK. 
Okay, so I've now got I've got one star that's going to appear in the elephant's trunk. This region's getting a bit restricted as well, actually. Look, that can't be a star, can it? I don't think. If this if this square is a star, there's only two cells left in this shape that could take a star, so that's not a star. Same with that one? Yes, same with that one. Uh, okay. Sorry about this. Um, there's only one star in this region. Oh, hang on. At the bottom rows of the grid, I've got three stars here. So I need three more stars in this tiny region. So divide it up into two by two blocks. One, two, this becomes a domino. We know that dominoes can't have cells next to them that contain um, stars. So we can do that and we can do some more shading. Look, one, two, three dominoes. Which is actually not helpful at all. Bar humbug. Uh, okay. I've got a very colourful grid. I feel like I'm getting a bit colour blind. Ah, okay, so now, yeah, there's something going on. If we look at row four and row six, we've got the same pattern. Yeah, okay, so let me, let me just think about this. So if this is a star, because this can't be a star, I'd have to put three stars into this five by one region so you'd have to do that now if on the other hand this is not a star and this is a star i have to put three in like that and that is important that is very nice because now this sort of snout of whatever this animal is aardvark um can't can't contain two stars i can't put two stars in there because one of these things is going to rule that out. So there's one star here. There has to be two stars in the aardvark. So we've got to give him two eyes. There you go. Aardvark eyes. Uh, now, does that help me? Yes, it does. Because I've got one star here. I know that one of these rows, row four or row six, is going to contribute a star either here or here. So that's two stars in the column. This domino is a third star, therefore we can X out the rest of it. Ah, and now, now this region, look. This region is getting very congested. If this, if the R barks has a snout on the end of its nose, I can't fill this region because all of these would, could not be stars now and I've only got a two by one domino and this cell to put three stars into. So this is very good, this is very good. That means that's a star, which means that's not a star. More to the point, we now know which of these rows has that pattern in it, it's this one. So. Yeah, that is forcing this to be a star in order to make sure that we're going to get three stars in this row. We need we need a third star in this shape, so that's a star. That's not a star, this is a star. Two, three. This star sees this domino, look, so that's a star. We've got three stars in column two now. So that still looks good, doesn't it? That's working. And we're, we're just left with the bottom right of the grid. Now, come on. So we've got one star here, so we've got two dominoes over here. Let's fill those in. That's a domino. 
this is a domino we know dominoes cannot be next to stars so we can x in those which means this row this row needs a star doesn't it it's got to be here so put the star in that's a star that's a star uh, oh now this column look I've got two stars and a domino so I can do a load more xing Uh, now what do I do? I feel like very close to, ah, oh yeah, this column, look, I've not put, I need to put two more stars in it. They can only go there. That gives me a third star in this row, so that's finished. This, that fixes that one as well, which gives me a third star there. And now, yes, now I need three stars in the middle of the O. Now, I know there's a maximum of one in these green areas. That's one, two, three. It's forced that there's stars there and there. So that's not a star. I need a third star in the bottom row. I've got three stars here. I've got three stars here. So this, I think is the finished solution i'm just checking let me just look at this for a second i've check i've got i think i've got stars everywhere what a puzzle that took ages on oh, nearly half an hour goodness i think riotaro told me it took him 20 minutes but he didn't have to explain it and he didn't have to label all the shapes with animals so uh, i don't think it was too bad i hope you enjoyed that edition of cracking the cryptic quite a long episode today but a lot of content and we'll be back tomorrow with a very interesting email featuring more Kurt Hugo Schneider content and the chance for you guys to win a prize. See you tomorrow on Cracking the Cryptic.